Hello, hello everyone. Going live now. You're going live on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. So I'm just making sure all those channels are actually working. Let me just double check. If you were there and if you're listening to my voice, Please let me know if you can listen it properly. Yeah. Just waiting a couple of minutes here. Hello, Kaya. How are you doing? So today we're going to cover some topic that's very, was very important in my life. We're going to talk about five essential non-negotiable steps to stop ongoing anxiety. So we're gonna probably cover some things that you probably haven't heard about before. So stay tuned uh, and you can also post some questions. I'm just waiting for one more minute to get started here. And really good to have you here. Hello, Crystal, how are you? Thanks for joining. We are live here on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. So I am sorry that I like a few cameras around. I'm sorry if I am not really looking straight to the camera because <laughs> there's a few things going around here. Hi. Yay. Good. Hi, Zara. Oh, so good to see you here. <laughs> really good. Okay. I think we are good to get started because I want to keep everything on time here to make sure that we actually have time for questions if there's questions at the end. Okay, so again, this is a live about five steps to stop ongoing anxiety and we're gonna cover this on a holistic way. So there are a few strategies that I wanna share with you and what we're gonna cover in this live, probably, so I don't know, if it's very hot there but here it is super super hot and my fan is broken so i'm like it's sweating here uh today we're gonna cover why most people get stuck in anxiety cycles we are also going to talk about uh, i'm gonna share a little bit my story with anxiety and four ways anxiety becomes chronic where it comes from how it develops and also Five things, of course, that we need to focus to heal anxiety at the root cause. Okay. Hi there, if you're joining here, so good to have you. Okay, so why it is important? Why did I I was prompt to do this live? Because anxiety and stress is not if it's not dealt with holistically. I'm gonna talk about this, the band-aids that we use, and naturally, with time. Persistent anxiety gets trapped in our cellular tissues, right? And it can lead to a series of serious, actually, health problems. And I'm not talking just about the aches and pains. I'm talking about serious illness that people experience from accumulated stress in our cellular tissue. And of course, you know, to, to live a life happier, to save your money, so you don't need to spend money with all those things that are not working at the moment. And to be there for your family, to be there for you without those, that anxiety on your background, the background of your mind, right? Hi there, Dr. Yogi Garwawan. <laughs> Good to see you. So if you, if you don't know, this is a warm up for a natural chronic healing workshop. So this, is, this workshop is a free event happening on the 13th of March. We're going to teach you the roadmap. To, that I use to heal persistent mental and physical issues naturally through food, herbs, and yoga. And so this event is for you if you are tired of depending on external solutions like the healthcare system, <laughs> that there's a lot of fails there, and you want to take charge of your health, right? You want to tackle these chronic issues at the root cause of their imbalances. So if you haven't 
join uh, yet i'm gonna just leave the link here in the comments for you in case now i just want to share a little bit of what was my story with anxiety because i'm very very familiar with that i suffer with severe anxiety panic attacks agoraphobia for many years and i i experienced anxiety since i was a kid I don't remember being a kid and not feeling the anxiety, but I'm not talking about, you no, know, sometimes if you're a little bit anxious, a little bit nervous, I'm talking about a constant in my life. And this anxiety would mess up my digestive issue, uh, crowded places, interaction with strange strangers, and pretty much I had a lot of triggers, triggers that put me in a very, very uncomfortable space internally. And this anxiety got severe once I was to reach my early 20s. That's when things start, start to get a little bit more serious, right? So um, when, I, when I finished uni and I start working and I used to drink a lot, sometimes smoke, and I was living a very unhealthy lifestyle. And um, yeah, anxiety was like a crippling in dominating aspects of my life one by one until it become it became really really uncomfortable and developed like i developed panic attacks i lived with panic attacks and agoraphobia for almost five years and it is interesting that not many people knew about it what i was going through so i didn't really talk much about it with anyone and um yeah so it was dominating aspects of my life I had like a turnaround. I'm not gonna go through the full story here, but what I'm sharing this life, it's things that I did that worked very well together as a package, these steps, right? And I did a lot of mistakes until I actually understood what to do to, to overcome anxiety, what to do to deal with it in, a, in the root cause of anxiety. So it took me a lot of trials and errors. So some of the things that I did, and if you have dealt with anxiety, you know, maybe you're relating to it, you can put in a comment if, you, if you've done that before to try to fix your anxiety. Now, all of these things they, that I tried before, some sort of band-aids, what happened is it weakened my, my um, nervous system even more, more than I was very fragile. And it weakened my capacity to process my feelings. So I try to rely solely on those things. And, you know, some of them actually might be good and along, uh, along the way as you do the work, right? Not all of them. They're not like bad, all of them. But they are not the, they don't deal with the root cause. So it can give you some support, but it's very dangerous space to rely solely on these quick fixes. Now, one of them is addictions. So I was pretty much living in an emotional eating cycle and screens and other things that are not necessarily I experienced, but I know a lot of people that do with shopping or overworking, just addictions in general. When you, you want to do something, to avoid uncomfortable feelings, right? So if you deal with anxiety, with any of those things, mention it in the comment because I would love to hear from you. Now, another thing that I did was to keep everything for myself. Like we need to vocalize, but we need to vocalize our feelings, not for others. Of course, depending on their situation, others might, you know, family and friends may be worried about your space at the moment but you need to do it mainly for yourself because as we talk we start to change the identity that we have with anxiety so it somehow helps us to separate our the identity the, how we see ourselves from the label of anxiety from the feeling and once we have this separation we can deal with it at a much better mental space now, this is something that I did not do for many, many years, and I learned about it. You know, I learned, but it took me a long time. So we are social beings, 
and we are meant to connect. So human connection is healing. And it's one of it was one of my my main mistakes. Now, it makes sense for you comment there, share your experience because this is something that I I see with clients and some of my students that it's very recurrent. Now another mistake was prioritizing anything else other than my mental health. Basically looking for escape through work, through uh, trying to help everyone else, like finding distraction in someone else's problem instead of sitting with my feelings or business or again, addictions. So prioritizing, occupying my mind so I would escape from the feeling of anxiety, right? Another mistake, not necessarily a mistake, but it was a mistake reliably and solely on it, thinking that would fix my problem was natural medicine, you know, like if you know if you heard about it, um, kava or perhaps some herbal teas, CBD, they're all really good supporters, but we need to be very careful to not expect they will fix anxiety. Okay. Fix severe chronic anxiety we're gonna talk about it but they they can be complementary another thing another band-aid quick fix would be visualization which is okay like some some people do like meditate sitting and do visualizations guided visualizations on on youtube there's some apps for that it's okay but the thing is it's too passive and we need to be confronted and sit with the discomfort in order to deal with anxiety. And as scary as this might sound, it's, it really doesn't hurt as much as living with anxiety itself. And I know that because, you know, when I was um, dealing with, with panic attacks, just the thought about sitting with my feeling, I was like, no way i'm gonna do anything else but sitting with my feeling i just want to run away because it was it was very very scary so i get that i get that energy work another band-aid um you know getting some energy work or like reiki all good as a complement but not necessarily to heal the cause unfortunately there's no one else that can do the work for us other than ourselves right and all of this that i'm mentioning here it is it it comes from the external and we really wanted to internalize the solution inside us we want to get in touch with the solution and internalize that right so therapy and counseling for example it is it's good and sometimes advisable but because a professional can help us understand the blind spots that we don't have and more than that it can hold space for us to sit with the uncomfortable professionally someone that knows how to do that so which is very different from talking let's say to to your cousin <laughs> a random person who might want to give her opinion or her advice and sometimes all we need to do is to sit and talk not necessarily have uh more fire on our mental state, right? But I would always advise to get help from a professional that has a holistic point of view, right? So this is something that it's also can be very beneficial, but again, I don't think it's enough. I don't think it's enough unless you actually do the work and the work that I'm gonna cover here in a moment. Right. We're going to talk about the four main types of anxiety source, where it's coming from, how is it developing, what am I feeling the way I'm feeling, and we're going to talk about the steps as well. But the last thing I want to mention before moving there is allopathic medicine. Now, I, I try it. I try it as well. And it has, you know, sometimes you, you do what you, you know best at the moment. But it can be very disruptive to our hormonal system, our hormone production, the serotonin, our dopamines. And when I'm working with a client, we are always very, very careful to transition off these, these uh, meds in a very gradual way because it can, it can really mess someone up. 
okay? Let's see here. Now, what are the four main types of anxiety stores? And I think this is a very, very valuable information to have to understand you better. So we have the first one here, which is trauma. It's basically, trauma is, is stress trapped in the body on a cellular level, on a cellular tissue. So trauma is nothing else than a stress that is physically in the body dominating. So it, it, it can be a conscious trauma, let's say an event that happened, a traumatic event, like a death from like a beloved one or something that happened that triggered a trauma and a person couldn't really process it. So it develops on something else, something bigger, or it can also, trauma can also be built up over time. Okay. And from like little things, sometimes difference in lifestyle or sometimes through habits, it builds up over time until it becomes something that it's unbearable. This feeling of, of anxiety, sometimes even a feeling of panic. Right? We are constantly on that state of fight, flight, freeze. We, don't, we can't take action. So there's, we might take action, we might run away, we might freeze up. But at the background, in our mind, there's so much thing going on. So much, so many thoughts and in, in our system is in, in like a very frightened mode. So this is the first type, the main uh, of a source of anxiety, true trauma. The second type is through ancestral system. So basically your generation's before you, your family. Uh, and this is even is stronger when it's with uh, the woman lineage. So women have way stronger bonds with their mother and the grandmother than uh, a man does. And, and sometimes we, we, born, we are born and we carry this ancestral trauma with us, right? It's not something that happens to our life, but it's born, um, it's brought to us when we are born and it's physically already manifesting in our nervous system from, from like uh, since we're babies. So ancestral systems and it's even in, um, in yoga, we say that a, a woman, a woman that heals herself, is not only healing herself, but it's healing seven generations before her. So it's very, very powerful when we do the work on ourselves as women and we are actually affecting our mothers, our grandmothers, even if they're not here on this physical plane with us anymore, right? So, um, and the, the steps, these five steps I'm going to share with you here, they were all going to help with that. So we talked so far about trauma, ancestral systems, and the third one, the third source of where trauma comes from, like how, how it builds up in our system to the point that becomes chronic is through acidosis. So I don't know if you heard about acidosis before. You can mention in the comments if this term is new for you. But basically, is acidosis is the bioaccumulation of acids and toxins through mucus farming foods, through the products that we use and the environments that we are, and like all this pollution getting to the body. But the biggest impact of acidos, what has the big, most impactful is through food, right? And yes, Muri W, acidosis over acids in the body. Yes, it's the accumulation of acids and toxins. And the thing is, our body is a super intelligent machine. It has an amazing uh, mechanics behind it. So it does have an elimination system. We, our life is basically consuming things and eliminating, consuming things and eliminating. Our cells do consume energy from our food and from our thoughts as well, thoughts that we generate. But it's it, even if you're having the healthiest food in the world, it's too generating acids and it's constantly eliminating. So we have basically 
for ways to eliminate this this acids, these toxins from the body and the, our elimination channels, which is the combination, the combo of lymphatic system and kidneys. So lymphatic system is basically the sewer, sewage system of the body and the kidneys will, fi will filter what, you know, the, the fluid from lymphatic system and we can eliminate it through urine. So we have the gut as well and we have the skin and the lungs. Now, when we are talking about self-healing, normally the biggest emphasis we put on first because they are big, the biggest influencers, influencers when we're talking about healing through food is the lymphatic system, kidneys, and gut, right? So this happens, acidosis, the state of acidosis in the body happens when we consume more than we can eliminate. So basically, our elimination organs they our elimination system it gets backed up what is the result if i'm consuming a lot of things and i cannot eliminate it it's accumulating in the body and acids what is the result of this accumulation acid acid burns it's very hot right so we start to see calcifications physically. We start to see calc calcifications in the body or edema or accumulation of fat. There are many ways we can identify acidosis in the body. Now, basically, there's acidosis for, you know, behind every illness, like every set of symptoms we have physically in the body. But what I want to talk about here is, Oi, Vivi. <laughs> What I want to talk about here is the relationship between acidosis and mental health, because this is link that a lot of people miss, and it's it's why a lot of people do not understand why those band aids, those quick fixes that we use in our daily life to get you know to process anxiety, why they don't work. This is one spectrum, you know, one layer of the solution. So basically. Think about the gut, for example, our gut. Now, big portion, the majority of the neurotransmitters in the body, I would say, I'm not, I don't know the, the percentages exactly. I know it's between 80 to 90% of the neurotransmitters in the body are produced in the gut. So that includes, for example, serotonin. You no, know, the serotonin is the few good um, that it, that it gives us the few good sensation and also uh, helps regulate mood, helps regulate sleep. So it plays a really crucial role, uh, role in our mental health, right? So the gut sometimes is referred as our second brain because of these extensive networks of neurons and the role that it plays on our mental health, on our overall health, basically. So, um, if we have, it, it, I, it, I think you can start to put the pieces together, right? If we have this accumulation of acids, of mucus in our gut, it's obvious it's going to start to interfere in the, the role of the gut as a neurotransmitter producer, right? So with time, one thing that we start to develop in our gut, it's, it's the mucoid plaque, which is basically this thick, has a, a rubber consistency layer on the inside walls of our gut, and it mess up with our absorption. You no, know, it mess up with our regulation in general all, of all the functions that gut play in our body. So that's one of the things that one of the connections between acidosis in the physical body and mental health. And the second one that I think it's also not it's overlooked or not so many people talk about is the adrenal glands now a lot of people know the adrenal glands um you know if you your adrenals are, are down you might feel tired and you we might feel stressed but why is that why do you know why now what happened is think about the lymphatic system and kidneys so kidneys are filtering the accumulation of toxins and these acids through the through the urine right 
So if the kidneys start to shut down, basically through inflammation, because there is an accumulation of acids in the body, what is the closest organs to the kidneys? The closest thing to the kidneys, the adrenal glands, they sit right on top behind the, the kidneys. So if the kidneys is inflamed, is not doing its job properly, adrenal glands are the next one to get shut down. So they, the adrenal glands, they are tied up with our emotions. So people with weak adrenal glands tend to hold on to things. You know, they normally weak emotionally and people can become very sensitive. So the beautiful things is as you strengthen your adrenal glands through natural healing, you will start to get stronger on your emotions, emotionally intelligent in the sense of you, you, you know how to process things. You know, it doesn't mean that you're not going to feel the feelings, but you do know what to do about it and it doesn't dominate your life. Does it make sense? Let me know in the comments if what I'm talking here is making sense for you. The relationship between adrenals and also the gut. I'd love to, to see what you're thinking about this information, right? Now, the adrenal glands control the auto, autonomic nervous system. So basically the autonomic nervous system it, it takes care of things in the body that we don't need to think about, you know, like our heart beating or if we start to sweat if it's hot. So this is the autonomic nervous system, okay? Now, your emotions can interfere with your adrenal and your adrenal can interfere with their emotions. So it's vice versa. That's why when, it, when we think about natural healing, we need to tackle both sides, the physical body, but also the subtle body, our mind, our subconscious, right? And so if, if the kidneys are shut down, the adrenals are shut down, it means that it's going to interfere with the function of the autonomic nervous system. And what happened when very basic system in the body that control like our basic survival things, like the heartbeat and the sweat, you know, what happens? We start to have anxiety and all other acid feelings. So if we have an accumulation of acid in the body, we are going to have an accumulation of acid feelings. Anxiety, one of it right like for me for example i was my reality was dominated by by the anxiety and fear and worry so all those emotions that you know it does not feel good it doesn't feel good but there was a way like there's a way scenario behind it on the physical level that is helping manifest those feelings right so Emotional detox and the physical detox, they are essential to heal adrenal glands. And if you do not heal your adrenal glands, anxiety is going to become a constant if it's not already a constant, right? So, um, yeah, so this, they, the, the adrenal glands, they control so much in the body, you know, uh, the kidneys and the emotional states, they all tied up in our solar plexus here. They are all connected with each other. And that's sometimes, you know, when we feel emotion, emotional, we sometimes feel pain in this area, in the area of the solar plexus. That's the autonomic nervous system, which then sends signals to our central nervous system, like our brain, our spine, and the central nervous system sends signals to our mind. I know this is a bit complex, but it's just like to give you an, a general idea of how these things are tied up together. And we're going to discuss more of this um, in our workshop. So we're gonna dive a little bit deeper in the workshop, okay? So if you haven't signed up for a workshop, if you're um, watching this live on 
on Instagram, because we are on Instagram, on Facebook and YouTube, then you can go to my bio. There's a link there for you to join. It's a free event for our workshop. Natural Chronic Healing. We're going to talk about mental and physical health naturally. How to tackle chronic conditions naturally through food, yoga, and herbs. Okay? Now, we talked so far about, I mean, I have some notes here, just if I don't forget. We talk about the four, three types of uh, anxiety source. We talk about trauma, ancestral systems, acidosis, and now the last one, with the fourth one, which is elementary stress. Now, elementary stress, what is elementary stress? So we, we tend to perceive stress coming from outside us. That's the tendency. It's something outside us. But a type of stress that is more damaging you no, know, happens when we disconnect from our feelings, when we disconnect from our, our ten, authenticity, our intuition, from our soul. This is elementary stress. It's the disconnection between us, how the, the person that we perceive as us, how I perceive myself and my values and what really the, the characteristics of my soul. When there is this connection, then elementary stress happens because I am not on my element. So, and when we separate from our foundation, we cannot fulfill our destiny. We cannot fulfill our, our truth. We cannot stand by our values. And these are elementary stress. And this elementary stress is one of the major causes of anxiety. So it comes from our bigger, biggest stressors. And of course, it affects how we respond to external events. Now, they are our biggest stressors because they betray our consciousness. So elementary stress is in our life. When it's in our life, it propels us to betray ourselves, our consciousness, what we have, the most precious thing we have, right? So just to give you some, a little bit more concrete examples here. When, for example, when I cannot keep my words, or if I lie to myself, or if I abuse my body in some way, or if I talk bad things about myself, these all are signals of elementary stress. And emotional eating was a very big thing for me. I don't know if it is for you. Comment, uh, you know, share in the comments if you feel like, if emotional eating somehow part of your life, because this is a major thing in elementary stress as well. And how, how do we heal that? How do we heal elementary stress? When our inner impression, how we see ourselves, actually matches our outer projection, which is how we project ourselves in the world. And which means that our actions actually match our words. So there's no stress from not being on my element here, if that makes sense. So these are the four sources of anxiety, right? Sources of chronic anxiety with time. So we have trauma, ancestral systems, acidosis, and elementary stress. Now, if you're joining the live now, this is the warm up for our natural chronic healing workshop, which is a free event where I'm going to teach you the roadmap that I use to heal persistent mental and physical issues naturally through food, yoga, and herbs. Now, if you're tired, like I was, to depend on external solutions to actually bring yourself back to balance holistically, this event is for you. So do not miss it. If you are watching on YouTube, if you're watching on Facebook, it's, the link's in the description of the video. And if you're watching on on um, Instagram, the link is in my bio, okay? So let's jump into the solution. 
how to heal anxiety coming from trauma, ancestral system, acidosis, and elementary stress. Okay, how to heal it holistically and the root cause. So the first thing I want to mention is non-negotiable to train the mind, to reprogram the mind. Now, this is something that, and not only this, but actually everything, all these five steps I'm going to mention here, they are, they're not quick fixes. You got to put the work. You got to do the work. And when you catch yourself feeling just tired from doing the work, but that happens, <laughs> just thinking about how life looks like with anxiety and how could potentially looks like without anxiety being a constant. So to train, to reprogram the mind, we really need a constant daily practice. And there are smart ways to do that. And I say, I say smart ways, not because the other ways are dumb, just because I think some ways are faster, faster and, yeah, basically quicker than others. And all of these five steps, they can be very uncomfortable. So train your mind is not going to be a comfortable process. You need to get used to the fact that you're going to sit into in discomfort and it's going to be very, very uncomfortable at the beginning, especially when we starting, let's say you've never meditated in your life and you feel constantly anxiety. What tends to happen is that in the beginning, when we sit in specific types of meditation that make it faster, active meditation not passive meditation there are a lot of passive meditation when you sit down you do visualizations or you um you just focus on the present moment focus on the breathing it's okay you know it might be be helpful bring some relief but it's not going to reprogram your mind let's see retrain the mind that's what i need i am Far too, I'm far too good, Marisa. Yes, retrain the mind. Extremely important. Now, there are many ways to do that, to reprogram the mind. The way I think it's the fastest is straight to the point. It's going to make you feel very uncomfortable, but it works. And it will reprogram your mind fast. the fastest way is through Kundalini meditation. There are probably hundreds or even if not thousands of Kundalini meditations. Some meditations are, you know, the beautiful thing is they tend to be very short meditation with some, sometimes they're more, a little bit more gentle. Sometimes they are full on hectic, you know, you, you start to feel uncomfortable in your body, but it's the work. As you feel uncomfortable, you sit and you train your mind, it's going to become very easy in the outside world when uncomfortable environments happening around you, okay? If we have time at the end, I'm gonna share you a very quick meditation that I think for me, it was a game changer. I use different types of meditation depending on the occasion. It's something that I do daily, every day, because even after you reach that point that you, you no longer live with constant anxiety and you just, know how to process your feelings at that point you still need maintenance because we do if you do all the work and then we stop doing it what happened things start to accumulate again and i did not mention that before but as we have things accumulated in our elimination system physically in the body we also have things accumulating in our subconscious mind subconscious mind imagine like a big recording of many experiences that we have we act mostly from our subconscious mind so we want to clear the subconscious mind and there are excellent meditations specifically to clear the subconscious mind as there are specific meditations for when we want to bring ourselves to calm down to literally calm down the nervous system in a very you know quick way so there are different types there the meditation, the meditation I want to share at the end is I'm not going to sit and meditate with you all because we don't have time, but I'm going to explain the technique and then you can do on your own. It's very simple, very, very calming. So we need to clear the subconscious mind and we need to reprogram 
our mental connections. This is smart meditation. Okay? So that's one of the things. And I use Kundalini meditation because I think it's the most efficient type of meditation. And I tried many different techniques, many healing modalities. Nothing was as effective, as quick, and um, transformative as some of these meditations that we can find in Kundalini Yoga. So this is the first thing. The second thing, which is, it, it, for me, was the hardest. And as, as my simple as it sounds, was the hardest, which is the self-inquiry and sitting with the emotions. And it took me a long time. I knew what I had to do, but I did not have the courage to do so especially when I was dealing with panic attacks and agoraphobia. I don't know if you know agoraphobia is like when you have that panic of, you can't, it's, it's the extreme fear of being the present moment. And the present moment is supposed to be the moment that calms us down, right? Yeah, so it was really hard to go and sit with my emotion because once you sit with the emotions, you will start to process it. Everything that you resist will persist. If you run away from your emotions, from your feelings, they will persist. They will get stuck. Emotions are not meant to be stuck in our bodies. Emotions are meant to come, teach us, some le teach us a lesson about ourselves, and go pass through us. And the only reason they get stuck in the body is because we resist. We don't have that mental training to see the emotions because all these five steps they help each other to be more effective as we train the mind we also are build the endurance to sit with the emotions so when i think one technique very quickly that I, it's called um what's it called the technique direct experience which took me a long time to be able to do it is when you sit with the uncomfortable, let's say, you pick up a feeling, not necessarily need to be anxiety, but personally use a lot for that. You sit with anxiety, but when I say sit with the feeling, it means that you're going to allow it to happen. You're going to try your best to drop any resistance to that feeling. And more than that, you are going to intensify, intentionally intensify that feeling. So let's say I'm feeling very anxious right now. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to close my eyes. I don't need to focus on my breath. I don't need to, to focus on what any, uh, any, anyone else is saying, an audio, nothing. You just sit it. And the, the thing you're going to intentionally focus is on the feeling of anxiety from a place where to the best of your ability at that moment, you try to separate yourself from the feeling, but you ask for that feeling to be intensified in your body. What happened at that moment is two things can happen from that space. One is anxiety will become something else. It will become another feeling. Sometimes it becomes sadness. Sometimes it becomes even joy. It can become anything. Or it's going to become a blank. Simply a void where you don't feel anything. You just feel, huh, that's okay. This process, if you're done properly, normally would take between 5 to 10 minutes. Right? And if it does become something else, another feeling, what you can do is... Practice the exercise again until it becomes a void or a blank. Does it make sense, this instruction? It can be very uncomfortable. And I tried to do that many times. I think it took me around two months to be able to do this because I was in such a, a mental, really bad mental space where everything would be very scary for me. So it's completely fine if we can do it the first time. And I have, a, to be honest, a lot of um, students and clients come to me saying, it's just too hard. I can't. Because your mind plays trick on you. You start to pay attention sometimes to your heartbeat or to your breath. And sometimes you think, I'm going to run out of air. And 
you know, at that moment, you want you want to focus on the feeling. Where is speaking to your body? Sitting. Ask as you drop. Because once you ask for a feeling to manifest in a very intense way, you want to feel it in all the cells of your body. Like, I want to feel it. And even it might not sound too genuine at the moment because, you know, I don't want to, you know, feel anxious. If it doesn't sound genuine, try it because eventually it will become genuine. The desire to actually feel that because you know it's going to work. But at the beginning, it might sound like uh, I'm saying from, you know, I'm not really meaning it when I say I want to feel that feeling. Okay. So I think that this it's this was the hardest for me. It's an essential part to learn how to sit with your emotions. This exercise, direct experience, is one way to do that. And I think it's uh that's the one of the best ways that I tried. Many yogis fail in this regard. You know, a lot of people come when coming from uh, yoga practice, yogic practice, we learn a lot how to connect to your body, but I think a lot of the yogis fail in this aspect of sitting with emotions and do self-inquiry inquiry what i'm feeling at the moment what do i need to not be feeling that way right is there any trigger around me so that's number two so we talk about training the mind we talked about self-inquiry and sitting with the emotions and now i want to talk about quickly with something that is tied up with the acidosis, which is clear heal inflammation in the body, especially inflammation from the adrenal glands and especially inflammation from the adrenal kidneys, lymphatic system accumulation and the gut. These three major parts of our body. How do we do that? There is always, always dehydration behind any chronic physical condition there's always dehydration behind it and obviously if we have a chronic mental condition that it's something that's persistent such as anxiety we will also have physical chronic conditions they are tied up together it's impossible not to have one and you know and just have one part of the deal. So we need to deal with the whole package. So for that, we need to hydrate the body. But it's smart hydration. When I say hydration, it's not necessarily drinking water. I'm talking about eating your liquids through fruits. And fruits and veggies, but mostly fruits on their raw state, where the nutrients are not, are not destroyed by heat and or by additions of salt and other spices so fruits are your best friends when it comes to rehydrating the body so break down hardened mucus the accumulation the accumulation that thickens the lymphatic system we want to deal with inflammation we want to heal the inflammation of these key organs the gut adrenals kidneys on the lymphatic system in general so that are we can do that through fruits fruits are highly astringent and someone let's say someone that comes from a fast food diet i would say anyone needs unless you're very you already have a very clean diet you need to transition to it that's how powerful fruits are because they they're going to bring stuff up to the surface on an emotional level and on a physical level and that's called healing crisis we all go through healing crisis as we are healing ourselves our physical body through detox through using we using fruits so to be more gentle in this healing crisis and really there's there's no rush we need a transition I'm not going to cover this transition in this live, but I'm covering it on the workshop. So please come to the workshop. You're going to learn more about the transition, right? And exactly the transition. I'm going to share some types of herbs that you can include as well, because herbs is another thing that will help you to heal inflammation in the body of these organs. And we use herbs as a state of consciousness 
as uh, to target cellular tissue, not to target symptoms. So when I talk about herbs, herbal formulas here, we want herbal formulas for adrenal tissue, for example. We want a herbal formula for gut, for kidney tissue. It's very different from taking herbal formula for headache or for anxiety or for insomnia, right? So there is another level of respect for the medicine, the natural medicine we're taking. And that's one of the biggest mistakes that I see that I've, I've done as well. You know, it's using herbs and I'm going to try to deal with this naturally, but then I'm taking herbs for symptoms. I'm taking medicine like I used to take um, kava. And there was another thing that I used to, I can't remember. Kava, and anyway, for, for anxiety. But then I was, okay, it is, it is dealing with the root cause. No, it's not. It's dealing with symptoms. So we really need to change this mentality of focusing on like a, a treatment mentality and the healing mentality. They are different things. So to heal inflammation from acidosis, which is generates acidosis generates inflammation in the body, we want to rehydrate the body. Fruits are their best friends. You need a transition for that. And we also can include herbs for a lot of cases I would include herbs especially for adrenal and kidneys to improve your filtration if your kidneys are not filtering properly we're going to cover that in the workshop you're going to do a test to check if your kidneys are actually filtering properly or not and if they're not filtering properly we want to increase filtration to heal the kidneys heal the adrenals move the gut and we use herb for that we use herbs once diet it's already taken care of. So we always focus on diet first in terms of intake, focus on diet first, and then we add herbs later on to help because we want to use herbs in a proper way, in a respectful way. Now, healing, it's a game. Not It, it doesn't matter if healing of the mind or physical body, spiritual healing is a game of energy management. So we just need to be very smart about our energy. And it comes with information, it comes with guidance as well. But when we eat fruits, they're very easy to digest. Digestion is a process in the body that takes the most energy from us. So if you're not spending that much energy digesting our foods, something that's easy, it gives the electrolytes, it gives the, the nutrients that we need for the body to, to have the energy and feel, to have that vitality, what's going to happen is the body is smart that it, it is, will direct its energy source to healing, not to digest, right? So that's why we want to transfer energy from digesting foods that are mucus forming foods that are unnatural for us to digest we want to transfer that to healing mode and then we need a break so we do that through detoxification holistic detoxification that's one of our main main topics in the workshop right so we covered reprogramming the mind self-inquiring sitting with the emotions with the technique of direct experience we cover clearing to heal inflammation from kidney lymphatic system, gut mainly. Now, obviously, we want to look after all the organs, but these are to start, one, to start with. And then we also need to strengthen our nervous system and regulate our hormones. This is done through diets, herbs, and train the mind as well. We can help with that. But there's another tool that I want to share here, which is Kundalini Yoga. The Kundalini Yoga, it's particularly exceptional, an exceptional healing too, to strengthen the nervous system and to regulate hormones. There's a lot of hormonal work we do through this type of yoga. Uh, let me know in the comments if you actually tried or heard about Kundalini Yoga because it's not a well-known type of yoga. It's not like mainstream as you can find most yoga studios or even you no know, gyms. So 
doing Kundalini Yoga practice three times a week, that's that would be my my suggestion. The practice they don't need to be too long. They, you can start with 20 minute practice and and build up from there. And there are different we call kriyas, which is like a set of exercise within Kundalini Yoga. So there are different kriyas for different purpose. And on Saturday, I am teaching Saturday 9 a.m. Sydney time. I'm teaching a Kundalini Yoga class focused on hormones to balance hormones and mental health so if you've never tried it before you can join us is a free it's a live like this one and you can join okay um so it strengthen the nervous system and regulate the hormones i've talked about the nervous system a little bit and and then the hormones i'm not going to get into too deep here i will cover a lot of this during the workshop but this is one non-negotiable step because you need to be you, you you need to be resilient internally. Your systems need to be resilient so you don't don't get stuck with the feeling of anxiety and panic and worry and fear. And your hormones need to be regulated as well. Okay. Now, the another so this is the the fourth step that I'm I'm gonna share here on how to heal persistent anxiety let's see i have done light meditation and prayers heard heard though about kundalini yes there are different there are as far as i'm aware two types of kundalini uh yoga and uh, i teach kundalini yoga by yoga bhajan so it's a it's a type of of yoga that really it, it helps you to face your shadows, let's say. It can be very uncomfortable. Uh, it triggers the body on very specific points. So it, it stimulates your hormonal glands to secrete, it should rebalance themselves. And we use a lot of, just to have an idea how it looks like, use a lot of um, pranayamas, which, breath, which is breathing exercise, different types of pranayamas for different purposes. And we use a lot of mudras with the hands. There's a chanting as well. So sound healing and dynamic exercise in the body. Some movements are quite quick, others more gentle. It depends on the effect that we want to generate in the body. And it helps us to awake our kundalini energy, which is this dormant, very powerful healing energy located at the bottom of our spine. So as this energy awakens in the body, which is basically life force energy it awakens it balances out our chakras awakes our hormonal glands each chakra is related to a different hormonal gland so it starts to balance things up on an energetic level and we need to have these all these facets of healing you no know, we through physically feeding ourselves with the right food doing through the detox so we can heal inflammation we need to deal with an energetic level as well because we are spiritual beings having a human experience. So we need to balance our chakras. And well, a lot of people do skip this part. But if you're doing all of this together in parallel, my friend, you're in a good hands. You know, you are really in a good path to heal yourself holistically. Okay, so number four, because we are almost done in time here, which is, which is support. Talk to someone about what you're feeling. That was really hard for me and took me a long time to actually reach this point, to be comfortable with the uncomfortable of talking about anxiety with someone else. There was so much so that I lived with, you know, panic attacks and agoraphobia for almost five years and very few people knew about it almost no one knew about it externally i was fine but internally i was a completely mess so find someone to hold the space without interfering in your experience and sometimes it's hard to find i know sometimes we, we feel like we're a bit alone um someone that is not gonna gaslight to you it's not going to keep giving their opinions or putting fire on your emotions. Someone that is emotionally mature just to sit with you and listen. 
And if you don't find, and if you feel like you don't have uh, someone like that in your life, come to the workshop. <laughs> because that, that is one of my goals, is to build this community of people that are willing to do the work and or they are already emotionally mature to hold space for others. So there is this beautiful um, healing sharing happening and there will be a lot of people like that no because i want to build this space so all of us can become more emotionally mature right and and share their gifts with others we are we are spiritual beings and we need human connection it's very healing and it sometimes it i, I understand it takes time i had a client once we worked for a long time together and she did amazing things, you know, just on her own, doing the work. And it took her months to actually have a human contact. She was by herself the entire time. She was very isolated. She went through some deep traumas. But once she did, and she had to build momentum to get to that point about just sitting and sharing what she was feeling. But once she did, she was like a flower blossoming. So beautiful things happen from that space, from that healing space. We need human connection. And when I say talking out loud about your feelings, about what you're feeling at the moment, it's not talking to your pet. It's not talking to your dog. It's not talking to the universe, to God, to prayer. All of this are good. No, don't need to stop doing these things through nature, to plants. I have some clients that is like no i'm good talking to my plants it's okay keep talking to them but understand that human connection is healing and we all need it we all need to break this barrier and there are ways to overcome this barrier if you're not prepared to talk about it but just know this is a part of healing spine and vagal nerve it's a big problem for for me plus calcifications of shoulders yeah so calcification it is a one of the the signs of acidosis in the body you know what happens is the body is steals calcium from from our bones to deal to balance out acids because acids you know that we have two sides of chemistry we have acids and we we have the alkaline as well so when the body is too acid, the, the body will naturally find ways to deal with the acidity when it's not getting from you, when we are not providing it uh, enough alkaline intake through food, for example, through thoughts. No, food is a big thing. Food is a big thing. So what's going to happen is it's going to use its reservoir of, of alkaline elements in the body, calcium, and that becomes that that happens in um manifest with calcifications in the body so it's a big thing uh, and um yeah so we need to, to do that food is a big good place to start and the vagus nerve as well with the kundalini yoga excellent for that to help balance out the nervous system as well does it make sense right the last thing here that I wanted to mention is, um, I think we covered the five things already. Let me just check my notes. We talk about training the mind, self inquiry sit with their emotions, heal inflammation, strengthen the nervous system and regulate the hormones. And we also talked about talking to someone about it, someone that can hold space. So the last thing I want to share here is the quick, this quick meditation to regulate the nervous system. And it was a game change for me. It was a game change for me. I was doing this meditation every day. And um, I, I would teach part of the meditation. It's, there's three parts, but I don't think we have time for that. But basically, it's very simple. You sit with your spine straight. Make sure your neck is elongated. So you bring your chin slightly towards the back of your skull. You close your eyes. You're going to focus on the tip of your nose with your eyes closed. You don't need to force it too much, but as light gaze, if you're not used to use 
we call DRISTI, which is moving the eyes to specific points to you know, generate an effect in our hormonal system. It's okay. It might, you might feel a little uncomfortable. You just need, you don't need to force it too much. So look at the tip of the nose, close your eyes, and then we're gonna breathe into in uh, this pattern. You're gonna breathe through the mouth, through the mouth, and as if you're like drinking air from a straw, like this. Very deeply, using your whole lung capacity. We want the air goes first to the bottom of your lungs, to your belly, and then it, it builds up until you reach your throat. So it's a very slow and using your lung capacity. Once you full of air, you're gonna exhale very slow through your nose. This this act of using the mouth as a straw and really and really use it use the muscles of your face for that okay some people get a bit shy and it looks weird you know who who cares be weird kundalini yoga is weird so you're gonna thank you diana you're gonna use your your mouth for that so really do a face so, And then you can hold for one second, a couple of seconds, and then it slowly exhale through the nose. You can start with 15 minutes and see how it can transform your nervous system. It really calms down. So this is there's three parts of this meditation. I'm just explain the first one. You can do this the, just the first one by itself. And do, during the workshop, I will explain the other two parts. But just this first part will help a lot. And you do that, your mind's going to start wondering. You might feel very uncomfortable in the position, and that's okay. Just gently, if any thoughts come to your mind, gently do not resist them, but let them pass through you and just focus on your breath. Now, Last part of this meditation is there's a hand position. So with your right hand, you're going to hold your hand like this. You bend your elbow. Let me go a bit far so you can see. You bend your elbow and you're going to, your palms facing straight. Your fingers are a little bit stiff, like antennas, like this. Don't need to, you know, too much, put too much uh, stiffness in your arm, but a little bit. Don't let it soft like this. Is this right? The other hand, your left hand, is also you're gonna bend, but you're going to have your left hand as if you're like holding a, some water or a, something here around it. So it's kind of a this shape. It's not, none of the hands are super relaxed, but you're holding the shape. This hand doesn't need to be that stiff, this hand a little bit more stiff. And you hold the position like this. Anytime that you realize that you're getting out of the posture, you you know, it happens. You might catch yourself many times just like you're relaxing, just bring bring yourself back into alignment. You'll notice that depending on your nervous system, the state of your nervous system, you might start to feel very sleepy. That's your nervous system really relaxing there. And I absolutely love this meditation. It's probably one of the meditations that I practice the most um, and it really helps. So you can start with 10, 15 minutes and beat your way up to half an hour. In half an hour, it's a really powerful, powerful practice. But the thing is with the meditation, with any meditation, you, you know, you feel good after the meditation, but then you need to do it again. I really, really suggest you to try it every day. 10 minutes every day. If you feel like I'm, I'm too busy to practice more than 10 minutes, do 10 minutes every day because the effects of meditation are cumulative. So the more you practice, the bigger I are going to be the, you know, what the benefits from it. I remember I was going through a very stressful project once and I asked this meditation for my teacher. Like, can you, I, I was very stressed and I was practicing meditation, but you know, they weren't doing the job. I was feeling out of alignment. It's like, I wanted something 
very powerful. And she gave me this meditation. And I practice every day. And this project was a nightmare. And I remember by the end of the project, I was so calm. I was like, I don't care. I, I was, it was very interesting to observe the transformation in my mental state with this meditation. It's very powerful. So give it a try. Maria, great information in Bodali. Thanks for your personal meditation technique. Hey, try, try, because I think it's very, yeah, just good things coming out of it. So that's it at the end of our live. So please let me know what you think, if this information was helpful in the comments. And I'm going to share the link for the workshop. It's a free workshop. So this was a warm up for our workshop natural chronic healing we're gonna cover so much juicy information in this workshop where i teach you my roadmap that i use to heal chronic persistent mental and physical issues naturally panic attacks anxiety we talked about here a little bit arthritis uh digestive issues hormonal issues like so many things i was a big mess <laughs> and i used all of this to this roadmap to heal myself. So I'm gonna share the link in the comments in case you haven't registered yet. And I hope to see that if you're watching on Instagram, you can find this link on my bio, okay? Thank you everyone for being here. We unfortunately, we do not have time for questions, but if you do have questions, leave in the comments, I will personally answer you tomorrow because right now I gotta go and I have an event. Thank you, Mel. I'm going to try the meditation. Sounds great. Thank you so much. I didn't know you're here. Awesome. Good to see you. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate your presence. And I do hope these tips will give you some light, give you some inspiration to try something different. Okay? We are all very well deserving of feeling happy and feeling at peace. And it's possible. I can guarantee that feeling at peace it's possible. We just need to do the work. It's different for everyone, but we can get there. Thank you so much. Much love for you all. Thank you, everyone on Instagram. <laughs>